All right, so this is going to be probably one of the later lectures. Or remember, the test is on Wednesday, so make sure you kind of grasp a hold of everything we're doing here today. Uh, so this is number five on the back of the limiting reactant and percent work, excuse me, percent yield worksheet. Uh, so number five, a process by which zirconium metal can be produced from mineral zirconium orthosilicate uh, starts by reacting it with chlorine gas to form zirconium for chloride. Now that's a mouthful. That's a lot going on. So lucky for us, the balance equation was given, and all I did was just write it right here. It's it's up there. I promise. What mass of ZrCl4 can be produced? So have they given you a given or a question? That's a question. So right now we know that our question is how many grams of that stuff can be produced, right? Right off the right off the front. That's what we know. If 928, excuse me, 982 grams of zirconium uh, orthosilicate. All right, so we know that they give us. Well, Mr. Jolly is balanced already because the right side has CO4. All right, yeah, let's. Well, side has CO4. Yeah, let's let's balance it. Um. Yeah, go away. Yeah, it was. That doesn't surprise me. She left her phone. Um, so, yeah, let's balance it. Oh, this is going to be aggravating to balance. Oh, it's not. Yeah, you just put a two in front. Yeah. That's it. Okay, well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. All right. And so then they tell us they have 900... And 82 grams of this. And they give us, and these are really large numbers for some reason, 977 grams of chlorine are available. All right, so that's our problem. And I know it's really hard to see, but this is the best I can do on this iPad. So the problem is, which one of these do I pick to convert to the other one? I don't know which one. So what do I have to find first? I've got to find the limiting rank. So here's what i got to do. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to just go ahead, and I know I'm going to one of the other products, so I'm just going to go ahead and convert to it. And so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to start with 982 grams. Can I just put of uh, this ZR thing? Because I don't quite write in that whole thing. Yeah. I'm just going to put X for the first one, just because it's so long and I'm on the iPad and it's just aggravating. All right, so I'm in grams, so what's the first thing i got to go to? Moles. i got to go to grams to moles. Okay. It's, do y'all see why it's frustrating sometimes? Okay. Extra loud here to y'all today. Yeah. It's like there's so much going on right now. All right, so here's what we did. We took each of our reactants and we're going to convert both of them to our product of unknown. Okay, so that's what we're got to do. Now, Jet, you brought up an interesting point. You said, why don't you divide by the coefficients? Number one, I've taught y'all this, but when did I tell you this is the only time you can use this? Yeah, but when is the only time that you can use this? When you are point blank asked, what is the LR? They didn't ask what the LR is, okay? They kind of did, but it wasn't directly because this is just something to use as an identifier. We actually need to convert, so we're just going to go ahead and do this. So it's going to make it a lot easier to, to, to convert in the end if we'll just go ahead and run this. So if they ask you about one of the products, Go ahead and set this up. And all this is is a gram to mole conversion, okay? That's all this is. Now, we know that we can plug numbers into this. Um, so 1 over 1. The mass that I got for that zirconium orthosilicate was 100. Can you all see this color? No. Yeah. What? I can't see it. All right, let me pick a different color. Um, purple. Purple, yep. 183. Point three one, okay. And I know the mass of chlorine is seventy point nine. Okay, that's one eighty three point three one in the top. Now, where does mole to mole come from? Coefficient. Coefficient. So, and the top one, and the red. 
What is your multiple there? One over one. And what's the bottom one? One over two. All right, so let's run this math. So I've got 982 divided by 183.31, and that gives me, let me change colors, let me change it to blue, that gives me 5.36 moles of ZnCl4, and the, that I, okay, see that whole N and R thing messed me up, ZrCl4. Okay. The first one I was supposed to. What not? Yeah, I did use ZR. Okay. All right. The, the bottom one is 977 uh, divided by 70.9 times 2, which gives us 6.89. Moles of ZrCl4. All right, so here is something super, super interesting. Now, based on this, what can we now determine? All right, so how do we know? Now, first of all, what is the limiting reactant? It's the least, and it must be the limiting what? Reactant. So which one of these is the limiting reactant? Okay, so this is our least value, right? But what's our LR? Zirconium orthooxalate, right? That thing. Why is the thing up there in the top that I just circled the LR? It's a reactant, and it produced the least. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm begging you now, please don't say the LR is that 5.36. That's just what we're producing. But how do I know that it comes from the limiting reactant? Because it produced, you can only make as much as the least amount that is produced. And I know that sounds real weird, but if you just like, okay, you can only make as much as the least amount produced, it kind of does make sense. But what's weird about the blue numbers at the very top and the limiting reactant? They're much smaller. Mm -mm. The numbers on top are bigger than the... Than All right. So the, the limiting reactant is at, we actually had more in the beginning. Do y'all notice that? So again, the blue numbers at the top, 982 versus 977. So but the question I always ask you is, can you assume that Cl2 is going to be the limiting reactant just because it's less? No, you can't say that, right? Because it all depends on how things are converted. So just because that Cl2 was the least amount, it's not automatically going to be the limiting reactant, okay? So don't always assume that. So now that we know what our limiting reactant is, are we still having to go to grams of Cl4? Well, what are we already in? Well, what do we do? Just convert it one more step to grams. So that's why we set this up this way. All right, so I'm going to add a page, and I'm going to convert that 5.36. All right, so we're, going, we're converting the 5.36 moles of... ZrCl4, and we're going to, yes ma'am, yeah it was, it was 5.36, yes it was, okay, all right, now I need a mass of that, I know that chlorine is 30, 35.45 times 4 plus ZR, which is 91.22. So the total mass on top is 233.02. So what do you do mathematically now? Multiply. Multiply. So 5.36 times that number. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. I forgot to pl plug that in. Uh, mole is one. Now that's a good that's a good point, Marcel. Why is it one? Very good. So it's with grams. Very good. I just wanted to just make sure we're we're on the same page there. Um, and so the final answer. Now I want you guys to tell me this. This is what popped up in the calculator. Um, one two four eight point nine eight seven two. How many sig figs? Three. Write, write it down. See, see what you come up with. I'm, I'm doing this to see, see if you can convert it to three sig figs.
Okay. Why is it twelve fifty? Very good. You go one, two, three, and then look at that. Why did you have to add the extra zero? A hundred and twenty-five, right? Does that make sense, though, when I say that? Because any number left of the decimal point has to have a placeholder there. Okay? It's like, never mind, I'm not even going to go well, there. I think of it. Exactly, that's a good point. If you're in thousands, you want to stay in thousands. You just got to make sure that the, the zeros add up. Okay? And that is grams of ZrCl4. And guys, that's a lot. I don't even know why they would why they would give you that much. But here's a little thought. Here's a little... It was just big numbers. Are you with it, though? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, is, that, is there a different way we can write that answer, make it a little easier? 1.25 what? Kilograms. Yeah, all I did was move the decimal three places to the left. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did anybody else get that? I mean, it makes sense. I think not everybody. No, I don't, you don't have to. But just think about it. King, Henry, died drinking chocolate milk. So we're here. We're at the dash, and I needed to get the kilo. So one, two, three. 1.25. That's easy. You wouldn't say you're 1.9 million grams, would you? That doesn't make sense. Okay, next problem. All right, so number six. In the reaction, barium carbonate and nitric acid, barium nitrate, carbon dioxide, and water are produced. First of all, is this thing balanced? Nope, this is, should be an easy one to balance, shouldn't it? Wait, wait. So it sounds like there's a fight going on around here. It is so loud in here today. I watched the video that All right, so it should be a two in front of nitric acid, right? That, that looks right. We're going to go with that. What? Uh, what mass of, B, of barium nitrate can be formed? All right, so is that a given or a question? That's the question. So we want to know how many grams of this stuff can be produced. Jonah, are you writing any of this down? Are you sure? Considering you don't even have a pencil. <laughs> Somebody give this dude a pencil. Okay. Um, can be formed by combining 55 grams of barium carbonate. 55 grams of carbonate, or excuse me, barium carbonate, and 26 grams of nitric acid. All right, so we have 26. So this is kind of one of those exact same problems where we're starting with two givens, and we've got to convert it to a product. Okay. So which one of those do I pick? Do I automatically pick nitric acid because it's the least amount? No, we just proved that in the last problem. You have to make sure you know which one is the limiting reaction. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start with both of them. So we have 55 grams of BaCO3. And I'm going to convert to the product I'm trying to go to. I just zoomed in. Yeah, what are we going to? Uh, barium nitrate. I'll back out. Give me a second. Stop. Don't, even st don't start that. <laughs> Stop. Not very. 
I don't have the greatest stylus is the problem. All right, guys, so what we've done is we've converted both reactants to moles of the unknown. Again, so this is the whole purpose. And if you go back and you study all those notes that we took, the first thing that you had to do was convert gram to mole of your, of your reactants. And then your second step was to convert the moles of the known to the moles of the unknown. So that's the step, that's the last step. And then once you, have, once you do your math, you can then determine your limiting reactant. Now I need to plug some numbers into, these, into these, uh, the rest of this. So what does mole get on the left pr uh, parenthesis for both of these? ones and then we now we need a multiple ratio what is your multiple ratio on top all right a one to one and then the green one to two all right so let's run these numbers real quick all right <coughs> excuse me so the bottom one or excuse me the top one is going to be 0 0.206 moles of <coughs> excuse me barium nitrate b a n o three two and the bottom one, oh, I just, I've got the numbers inverted. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I did. I messed it up. I looked at the wrong numbers. It's 2.79 on the top. And the bottom one is 0 0.206. 206. Wow, that's real bad. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, so from this, can we now determine our limiting reactant? Yes. With, yes, ma'am. That's a good point. Would it mess you up if you put two decimal places? No, because you'd have point, <coughs> point two eight and point two one. No, you would just be one significant short. Okay, just to, just. That is, as a matter of fact, Sarah, that is actually a good point. You're right, because both givens are in two sig figs, aren't they? Uh, so technically, it's 0 0.28. I'm, I didn't, wasn't even paying attention to that. And 0 0.21. I'm glad you actually pointed that out. That was my mistake. I was, I'm used to doing three. Okay. So now, if we look at it from this perspective, the answer is still not going to change. Um, so who is our LR? The bottom one. Nitric acid. So this down here. This turns it into our LR, okay? But have we answered the question? Nope, we sure haven't. So now we need to move on. We need to figure out what the answer is. So we're going to take uh, 0 0.21 moles of barium nitrate, and I need to convert it to grams. So moles to grams, and I'm just going to shortcut it. Um, Okay. 261.35 in the top divided by one mole and then uh, so now we just multiply those two things together times 0.21 gives me an answer of 55 grams of BANO3 what? What's wrong? Yeah, you, but you can still produce that. Okay. All right. Guys, uh, if you look at this one, we're going to skip this one, number seven. It's, it's a little more than what I normally test on, so we're going to skip seven. So let's look at eight. Um, we're actually going to skip this one, but I just want to point something out. Just listen. There's a reason why. It's and the reason why is just it's 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 got a little more than I want to than I want to take time to do on this iPad. Uh, it says when 45 grams. Actually, this is a good question. Aspirin is synthesized synthesized by the reaction of salicylic acid with acetic anhydride, and so it gives you those amount. So it says 40 and a half grams of this thing. So we have 40.5 grams of this, and it says 26 grams, 20 or 20, okay, 26. I just want to point something out. We're not going to do the whole thing. So I have 26 grams of this stuff, 
And the first question is, which is the limiting reactant? Are you with me? Now, you can do it the way we have been doing it. You can go from gram to gram to mole to mole to mole, just like we've been doing it. Or you can do it the short, and again, you'd have to do it both ways. You'd have to do it both times. Or you could do it the shortcut, which is the moles divided by the coefficient. Now, here's something I want to point out to you. First of all, are we starting in grams? Yeah. Yes. Regardless of which step we choose, the blue or the red, are you definitely going to have to do this one? Yes. yes. Regardless of what you do, you're going to have to do that first step. But here's where it's different. Look at the red and then the blue that we have left. What's the difference in the red and the blue? Right here, all you're doing is just dividing by the coefficient of that reaction, aren't you? But the top, what are you doing? You're actually getting to the product. Does that make sense? So look at the next question, question B. What mass in grams of aspirin are formed? Well, does it make sense to do the bottom one then? Especially if I can go ahead and get right into that product. So if it really does make more logical sense if you'll start with the top one. Don't worry about doing this all the time because sometimes it causes more work on the back end. Because guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to find the LR and then come back to the grams and do a three-step gram to gram. Or you can do it the blue way and do one more step and you're done. That's why it's easier. Is everybody following what I'm saying? I feel like I'm kind of talking to a brick wall. Like the blue one just is quicker. The blue one is a lot. It looks like it's more work, but it's the exact same thing. What? Okay. You have to do the, the green box regardless, right? Because that's, that's a minimum. So you might as well go ahead and do a mole to mole. And what is aspirin? It's this C98604 thing, right? This is actually a, a good question. Like if you were a pharmaceutical salesperson or if you were going to the pharmacy, I need to make so much aspirin. Well, I know I've got those two reactants. How much aspirin can I make? Is that really aspirin? It really is aspirin. Yes, this is an actual chemical reaction. Yes, this is real. Okay. And so you can you could do this reaction. We could do this in a lab. Okay. And you can go from there. We can make aspirin. If we had a lab to do it, and we could do this. Okay. All right. So, but we are going to go down and we're going to do number nine because I want you to see number nine. All right. So last question. What is the percent yield? All right, well, we don't even, we haven't talked about percent yield a whole lot, but I want to make sure that everybody knows what it is. Does anybody remember what the basic definition of percent stands for? It's a part over whole. Okay, part over whole, very good, times 100. So I'm just going to leave that out just for right now. But in chemistry, the percent yield, so if we change this to percent Y, we actually have to change it. What does it stand for? You have to know this. Yes. It's actual, what's that other word, that long T word? Theoretical, right? Times 100. Now, can I give you an easier way to look at this? Percent yield is no more than what you got divided by what you wanted. It's got over want. Another way to look at this is, what do you want on every test? 100. 100. What you got is how many points you earned, right? So how do you figure out your grade? 60 over 100. 60 over 100. That's your percent, right? Okay. If it's a 40-point test and you got 19 right, it's what you got divided by what you wanted. You wanted 41 points because that was the most you could get. Well, that'll give you a percentage. It's the exact same thing. We're just talking about chemicals and chemistry. It's the exact same concept. Okay. So it says... What is the percent yield if the quantity of the reactants is sufficient to produce 85 grams of Cl2O? So it's sufficient to produce. Is that how much you got or how much you wanted? That's how much you wanted, right? So our, per our percent Y is 0 0.85 grams, but... Only point four girls. Okay, one more second. Okay, only point four one grams is produced. Where does that go? On top. Zero point four one grams, and then that's all times one hundred. Somebody run those numbers and do not say it out loud. You got a calculator? Hang on one second. What?
All right, what'd you get? 48%. So is that a good reaction or bad reaction? It's pretty bad. If I said you're going to get a 48 on this test before you ever took it, would you take it? No. Nope. I wouldn't either. Okay. That's all you have to do. But now, if you've got to make sure that you can convert. So the last problem that, that I want to work today, you, it's on a different worksheet. It's that percent yield worksheet. Okay, so this is the uh, the one on the front with the, with the uh, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a big dark bar in the middle. Okay. All right, so what it says is magnesium is being mixed with nitric acid, right? So it's Mg plus HNO3 yields what? MgNO32 plus what? H2. Okay. This is not balanced. We need to balance it. All I need is a 2 in front of nitric acid, right? Okay. And then what's the question? Okay. And what type is this? You should know that. Single replacement. Very good. So if I start this reaction with 40 grams of magnesium. Wait, where is this? Where are we at? Flip it over. Okay. And excess. Yay, yay, yay. You should start cheering at this point. Why? You don't have to do the limiting reaction. You know what it is. Yay. Okay. Um, how many grams of hydrogen gas will I produce? So this is just a straight gram to gram, isn't it? You agree? We're get, we have 40 grams of magnesium, and I need grams of, of uh, hydrogen gas. So I've got 40 grams of Mg. What's wrong? Okay. Because it said excess nitric acid. Does that make sense? Okay. And so I've got grams of Mg. What's the first thing i got to go to? Can I go from gram to gram in one step? No. Mole of Mg. And now I'm at moles of Mg. Where do I go? Moles of H2. And then moles of H2 to grams of H2. Okay, so moles and grams, moles gets one. The mass of hydrogen is 2.02. 2. Magnesium is 24.31 or 03. 24.31. Glad I hung this thing up in here. Okay. And what is your mole to mole ratio? One to one. Okay. Sarah, will you run that for me? 40 times 2.02. Don't forget to divide. Yep. Very good. So 3.32 grams of H2. Now, if you really wanted to go to two sig figs like we should, it really should be 3.3, but it's fine. We'll just we'll just go with that. Do you have the sheet? No. Do you write? Do you have any of the last we did? So you just sat there and. Okay. Number three, uh, if 1.7 grams of hydrogen is actually produced, so as soon as they say that word, you, that's what you got, right? That's percent yield. So 1.3 grams, um, what is the percent yield? So, what? Oh, 1.7, my bad. We got 1.7 grams. And then, so we're dividing about what we wanted. Now, here's the problem. We need to make sure we know what we wanted. How did, so this is the theoretical, and this is the actual on top, A over T. Theoretical is what you got on, sorry, what you got on paper. Did you find 3.3 .3 on paper? You sure did. You just did it in the last step. So now we have to divide these. 1.7 divided by 3.3 times 100. Why didn't you do that? Uh, just to do two sig figs. What did you get, sir? 
that make sense? Like it's what you you calculate it on paper, okay? And actual is what you would do with your hands. Like, all right, everybody good? Yeah. All right.